So how can parents actually help nurture their children to actually further understand their own emotions as well as the emotions of others? Um, Julie, can you share your perspective with us on this? Does it all start with mum and dad? I mean, speaking as a parent myself as well, I think one of the ways children learn to regulate their emotions is actually through looking at parents. So parents are basically the models. Now, as, as adults, when we show our kids we are in control of our emotions, uh, when we are aware of how we want to react and what we do with our emotions, we are actually teaching our children how to react as well. Mm. Yeah. So that's the most fundamental or basic way where a child learns how to deal with their emotions. And of course, as they develop, in the early years, it's very important to give them sensitive care because it's important for their emotional So affirmative, you know, words and, you know, cuddles, hugs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And That's what we're talking about, needs. right? Yeah. We okay. need to respond to their needs because as we respond to their needs, their emotional needs are being met. They form attachment and bonds uh, with parents as we respond. To right. Them. And would you say that will actually shape um, who they become later on, I mean like when they become teenagers, you know. It definitely shapes them because the first few years are really crucial years. Mm -hmm. It shapes how they see the world, it shapes their worldview, it shapes their ideas or their perception about how they should respond to others as well. But having said that, um, it's not without hope. Like, it's not like a dead end if I miss this opportunity to shape them in their early years, then it's really detrimental in their adolescent stage. Because it's the idea about learning about emotions and the idea about learning is a whole process. It's a lifelong process. Okay. So skills can always be developed. Okay, um, so obviously parents have a very, very important role today. It all begins with the family, with the background, with mom and dad. Nutrition aspect of it all, how, how do parents play a role, Celeste? I think kids, when since they are born, they have no choice. I mean, it's like whatever <laughs> parents feed them, they have to eat. Correct. So in the first few years, they don't really have choice to say what I want to eat. And after like a few years, like uh, when they develop, then they start to expose to other things. Then they say, "Hey, I want this. I want that. I want that." Mm -hmm. So that's why whatever things the parents actually offer them or give them, uh, actually teach them about the whole food groups and what to eat, not to be picky or whatever things that it actually helps them to have that eating habits. So when they grow up, I think uh, at that point when you say that 10 years old, it's hard for you to control whatever things they want to eat at that point. But the beginning, if you have teach them properly, I think it will not go too far or too far away. Mm. But isn't it at the very young age where they are the first years? I mean, how many of you yes. here are parents? Mm. And how many of you have like headaches when it comes to meal times? Uh, see? Yes. What are we it's doing which is not right? Actually, it's, it's <laughs> normal. As in like, you, you can imagine yourself as a child. You haven't been exposed to a new food before. So okay. that's why they call it as a neophobia, as some things that they, they don't know something new. So it takes time for them to, to accept something new. So it doesn't mean that once they reject, that means they don't like it. It's just like how that's how the emotional things come in. Is like how do you Coach encourage and them? Coax them? Correct. So at least that they can they can accept the things easier. That's also the emotional. I mean, teaching come in rather than just ah, only food. Talking about everything else, Julie. What about at home? I mean, aside from providing um, emotional support and exposing them to activities to enhance their EQ and IQ, how can parents actually encourage? children's development through optimum nutrition. I mean, of course, we can put it in vet, but if they don't want to open their mouth and swallow it, we can't force them. So how would you help us in that regard? I think in that sense, uh, if we are looking at the behaviour and trying to get kids to eat healthily, maybe perhaps uh, we could help them associate it with something nice. So disguising the food is yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think oh, this is not actually see... vegetable. This is potato chips. And that is it. Something like that. You know, these days you see whatever it takes you see right. people, you know, decorating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's okay. basically encouraging them or being a little more creative in how we present the food. Uh, but I think 
Celeste did mention as well the part whereby we model eating behaviours, they pick that up real quickly. So if you want them to eat healthily, then perhaps we should eat healthily in front of them instead of uh, taking yeah, unhealthy food. How can we instill EQ skills towards toddler's age? Because when it comes to the fundamental of learning, basically it's reading, writing, that kind of thing. So how can we collaborate EQ skills and IQ skills for this group of age? Okay, so we are looking at toddlers. Um, I think one of the areas where we coach emotional intelligence skills is through emotional literacy. Just like language literacy, we teach them to read and write. In emotions, we teach them to label feelings. So we can come up with interesting charts of different kind of faces, label those feelings. So for very young kids, like toddlers, I think the basic things is to understand the difference between feelings. So to be able to read, if it's a smiley face, most likely it's a happy face. You know, the different types of emotions or the different types of emoticons to uh, identify them by name. So we teach them to label emotions, so to know the difference between anger, sadness, happiness, surprise, disgust. So we talk about things like that. So in fact, you can just start with three emotions that they would most likely experience and then move on. Since we're still on the topic of IQ and EQ, Julie, can you tell us how this combination can help prepare children for the future? Okay, now, um, from the developmental psychology point of view, we look at development as, or ideally, we would like children to develop holistically. And there are mainly three domains to it. So one domain is the cognitive domain, Another domain would be the socio-emotional domain and then there would be the physical domain. So the physical domain would be things like you know, being physically healthy, taking proper nutrients and things like that. Cognitive domain would be their thinking skills, their information processing skills and their socio-emotional domain would be their emotional skills. So IQ and EQ are basically two domains if you can see. So IQ would be under the cognitive domain and EQ would be under the socio-emotional domain. Okay. Now, when, when children develop well in both of these domains, they are actually moving towards holistic development. So in other words, they are developing a well-balanced life and they are equipped cognitively as well as emotionally. Their own personalities yeah. are developing. Um, what about the soft skills aspect? What kind of soft skills would a child need to be future ready, so to speak? I think these days, we're talking a lot about social thinking skills. We would like children to be equipped with social skills so that they are able to collaborate with other people. So we are moving into areas whereby we teach skills to children whereby they learn collaboration. Now when a child is able to collaborate, they can negotiate well with their friends, they are able to handle conflicts, they are able to problem solve. That's one of the soft skills that they should acquire. Then apart from that, there are also other skills like communication is a very important skill as well. Uh, we don't really teach it, but it's a soft skill because we don't really teach it. So it's a skill whereby it helps them build relationships, sustain relationships and well, basically work with other people. So it comes back to IQ and EQ as well. If you have that, then you know what's good and what's not good for you, mm. I suppose, right? Yeah. Julie, what about you? What would you have to say? you know, growing up today in comparison to the past, you know, we always hear this, you know, oh, it was so much easier, so much more carefree and we didn't worry about our kids as much and all that kind of stuff. What's your take on that? I think that children these days are growing up in an environment that is uh, stressful because they are bombarded with all kinds of information. With the advancement of technology and as they are exposed to various areas, they are basically bombarded with everything, whether parents can filter it or not. So in order for us to help them, I think one very important area is to teach them to be emotionally resilient. When a child is emotionally resilient, they will know or they know skills on how to manage their emotions and how to manage stress. At the same time, they will learn or they understand how they should evaluate information that's being thrown to them. 
Okay, emotional resilience. That's the first I've heard of it. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how we can develop that? Okay, so with our children. Yeah, basically resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversities. So emotional resilience is the ability to regulate back our emotions in the event that you know when we uh, when we feel down or anxious we are able to bring it back to a level whereby it's manageable so how we can help that or how we can nurture that in children is basically to teach them about support system to help them understand that they are always not alone they can identify people that will support them in their journey we teach them coping skills so what are some of the things that you can do if you are feeling unhappy or if you have felt that you have reached a date and what do you do? Coping mechanisms. Yeah, coping so mechanisms. Yeah. Okay. You know, we're talking about, you know, children, even teenagers as well, you know, who go through a lot emotionally and sometimes they don't know how to cope yes. with it. And as you mentioning, you know, parents play a very important role in giving them a support system, support right? System. So you can always come to mom and dad if anything correct yeah or they could also identify people within their community that they can go to for support so a school counselor a teacher or a good friend yeah we need all these people working together to support them cool alina in terms of for education right the potential challenges that our kids will be facing in the future do you think that the current skill sets of writing and arithmetic are sufficient obviously as you said it's not so what else can we do to make sure that they are fully equipped eq -ly? I think I cannot emphasize enough how technology is going to affect the way we live. So on top of teaching how to behave in the real world, we need to also teach them how to behave in the digital world. This digital etiquette, what is okay to do online and what is not okay to do off, uh, online. Uh, on top of that, Technology has also redefined a lot of things, including your self-esteem. Your self-esteem today is based on how many likes and how many shares you get on social media. And so these are all the things that parents, teachers need to embrace. And when, when I say embrace, means keep themselves updated with these things. Because our children are, go are moving towards a digitized world where they're getting more and more disconnected between each other. So does it mean that the parents have to be equipped as well to know what is going on? Definitely. That we all have to have Instagram Definitely. accounts and Facebook accounts to make sure we monitor our children. We were never told that coding and programming is important. We were told that learning English is important, learning an extra language is important. But right now, learning an extra programming language has become one of the criteria that you have to have. That's right. And you mentioned to me earlier that coding now is the next big thing that all it's children an, in school would have right, to learn. It's the next literacy. One day we're going to face an illiterate problem, not because they're unable to read alphabets, it's because they're unable to read any programming language. So with this digital world becoming so vast, where does the EQ come in then? The EQ comes in on how we use this technology. I think it's very easy for us to come up with new technology, but if it doesn't really help us or it doesn't really help how we live or improve our life, that's very important for us to realize that, for us to know that we're creating new technology not so that we can be the next Bill Gates or become the next millionaire, but because this technology is going to help a lot of other people around the world. So that's important. And once we lose that and we see numbers as numbers, that's scary. Yes. Because, you know, a lot of um, teenagers these days and kids these days, they think if they don't have enough likes and their photo or something means people don't like them. And they get very sensitive about stuff like that. You know, they have to realise that it's not real, real per se. Do you experience things like that with your kids? I mean, with the kids in the school and stuff? all the time. I think social media has really changed the way they look at themselves and look at the people around them. And it's very important for influencers to be good influencers. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of influencers on social media that does not really help the girls especially to shape themselves. So they, they always think that there's a certain way to look because that's the only way to get more likes. A certain way to share because that's the only way for people to share even more. And we, we're talking about fake news, so we need yes. to, to teach kids how to find out what news are good and what news are not. 
So to be able to decipher, basically, right. right? So basically, kids today has a lot more responsibility because there's a world in the digital world and then there's a world where here we are talking to each other and the way we behave here is completely different from the way we behave online. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of, you know, kids come up to me and I, I speak to them, but then they can't articulate. And then when they send me a message, I'm like, wow, this is really well written. It's, it's tough. You, you need to be digitally savvy at the same time you want to be human as well. I have a question for Anina Amir and Sui Julie. We often hear that the world of the future is becoming radically different. Right? It's much more technologically reliant. And uh, right now there's a stress on STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're aware of this. My question is, in a world that is increasingly technologically reliant, right? we're surrounded uh, in the future by machines and computers and smartphones and whatnot, where does EQ play a role? Like I mentioned before, I think a lot of people can be technologists. Uh, a lot of people can come up with new apps, new software. Uh, but not a lot of people can empathize with the things that they, they come up with. Again, empathy is, is one of the most important skills, I feel, for the future. So we don't become uh, machines ourselves. And we talk about the Industry 4.0. That's what we can see in the next 5 to 10 years. If you have a kid right now, and your kid grows up to be 20, it's going to be Industry 5, 6, 7.0 already. So we can't really say that what is the future. All we can say is we need to constantly be updated, constantly be aware of, of how the world is changing, how the world is revolving. And at the same time, don't forget to be human because that's, that's the only thing we have now that everything else is being done by robots. So like what you said, you know, it's what you do with the information, the human aspect yes. that you do with it. That's very, very important. Does that answer your question? Part of um, emotional development includes morality as well. So when a child is well-developed emotionally, they are basically morally aware. So they are aware of their values, they are aware of their principles, and they are aware of their character as well. Morality and adversity, that definitely, it's part of emotional development. So it's, it's definitely an important component as well. That's why EQ is so important because it encompasses so many areas of a child's development.